Hi, this is Drew Tignanelli. This is the June uh, update, 2013. It is. DJ, how are you? I'm happy to be here, Drew, as always. Hey, listen, we have a unique way of looking at investments, and I thought it would be great within the context of all that's going on in the world and the market these days for you to reframe that. So what we do is we do technical analysis, which is we're looking at how markets move. You're really not looking at any of the fundamentals or any of the macroeconomics you're just looking at how the markets are moving how they've moved in the past and what are past patterns that you can use potentially to get a clue as to what might happen uh, to come now technical analysis in and of itself is not in my opinion, very helpful. But it can be risky, even. It can be extremely risky. When I, you know, I've seen people who say that they feel that they can predict markets by using technical analysis. I've just never seen it be incredibly helpful in and of itself. Okay. But when you couple it with good fundamental understanding, in other words, is the market overvalued or undervalued, or what are the P/E ratios, the cash flows, and book values and all these other kinds of things, it, it, it gets some extra benefit. So that's our second part, fundamental analysis, how the market's companies being valued. Are they people overpaying for them or underpaying for them? When you went back to 2000 and you looked at the tech companies from a fundamental viewpoint, it wasn't impossible to figure out that companies selling for 100 times earnings mm -hmm. and and 50 times book value and things of that sort that unless they just blew the cover off the ball, you know, is that, a, is that It is. That's something. It's something. Go. I, I have a tendency lot. to uh, say these little statements right. and, and mix them. Like Mixed I metaphors, said, I believe they call I it. said once to my wife, I said, you're just scratching the top of the iceberg. Oh, really? Scratching yeah. the top? You're worth, like scratching the you're surface? Worth right. Your weight in salt. <laughs> Worth your weight? No, did you really say that one? <laughs> my wife has got about 50 of them. Oh. They really, her and my daughter, Melanie, sit there and they accumulate them. Right. And they're going to say one day they're going to write a book called Drewisms. You know, like they did with Bushisms and so I forth. would like to get in on that book because yeah. I've heard a few myself. <laughs> anyway. All right, so we've got technical analysis, we've got fundamental We're just analysis. Scratching the tip of the iceberg we right are. now, Maurer. So those two, and then what's the third piece? The third piece is the macroeconomic piece. Yeah. So we're looking at. We're looking at um, how is the world economically, and is there sovereign risk? Okay. In other words, sovereign is there risk. a developed nation that looks like it could have serious financial difficulties? Greece, for example. Well, Greece, you know, I mean, well, I'm not the saying example Greece people are familiar with. Developed nation. <laughs> I should take that back. <laughs> um, yes, Greece, for example. Now, one one that could trigger things through other. Uh, financial institutions such as banking, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And that's why 2008 we were so concerned because we saw both sovereign risk and we saw both uh, systemic risk, which is the banking system mm -hmm. runs into problems. Okay, so let's look at today. From a macroeconomic point of view, Europe is still a Gordian knot, you know, as we talked about one time many moons ago. Um, and it's got its problems, but I will give them this, that they they're, uh, appear to be healthier than they've been before, but if you have a major economic slowdown, I mean, you could, that thing could really just blow. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for right now, they're moving in a more positive direction than they had been in the past. Sluggishly, but positive. Sluggishly, but positive. And there, I mean, you even got com countries like... Um, um, uh, uh, Gosh, how can I forget the name of that country? Uh, Croatia oh, yeah. and Latvia, mm -hmm. and uh, who are actually saying they want to join the Euro hmm. next year. Interesting. And, uh, you know, now... You Other know, people think it's about to break up. Unless these countries really manage their economics better than the other ones that have had problems in the Euro, I hope they understand now, watching this, that you've got to be very diligent if you enter the, the Euro. So anyway, you've got uh, the macroeconomic appears to be healthier. The U.S. banking system yeah. is on fairly solid ground right now, okay? Uh, it still do a lot of stupid things, but on solid ground. Fundamentally, the market is not overvalued in most countries of the world. Their, their earnings are coming in 
And as long as there's nothing to stop those earnings dramatically, there's no reason to say that fundamentally we're having problems. And interest rates are still low, and there's mm -hmm. no reason that they're going to... They might go higher on the long-term interest sure. rates, but you're not going to get what's called an inversion, where short-term rates go up and either level with long-term right. rates or higher. Yeah. That's a danger to the market. You can get those 40 50% declines mm -hmm. when that happens. You're not getting that right now. But the technical one is the only one that's kind of out of whack right now. You've had a a 52-month bull market in U.S. stocks that has not seen a 20% drop. That's only happened in a few times in all of history. Yep. That would be a warning sign. Sure. You, you know, your average odds bull are, market is like 30 months. I think. The average bull market is about 26 months. You know, which is close to 30. Thank you, Drew. And, I'm uh, scratching the tip of the iceberg. And uh, <laughs> and um, you know, so we're at 52 months. I think the longest one is, um, you know, I think you had one that was like quirky that was like 80 months. Right. But 60 months is about the the longest you typically will see. Yeah. There were three or four 60 monthers, but after that you long had a tooth, good, as they say, the very long. And um, so you got you got these technical things going on. Also, you know, you have Japan is very volatile lately, but they just went up about 80%. So a national in pullback. six months, wow, eighty percent. They were at eight eight thousand just in October of two thousand and twelve. Go look at the chart, and they're at fifteen thousand wow. just a little while ago, and uh, they've pulled back a little. They've pulled back about ten, twelve, thirteen percent. You can expect that kind of, of stuff when you get that kind of a. Um, so anyway, the market's going through a pullback. Yet you know, you still have, like I say, if you get a slowdown of the economy, you could really have some um, problems from the world has not fully uh, solved its problems from 2008. And that's why people have to, uh, if they're sitting in their 401ks, they have to be still concerned yeah. that they're not going to just rush out and throw everything caution to the wind. That's a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> hey, go. speaking of good ones, last night we had a great interview on the radio with Laura Vanderkam, and one of the more interesting topics to both you and I is this notion of career capital. Talk a little bit about that. Career capital is where you um, encourage somebody to pursue their passions in life. You, pr you encourage people to continue to pursue knowledge and talents and skills. Networking. That networking that makes them valuable to an employer, either you, their current employer or that if their current employer were to say to them, hey, we don't need you anymore, mm -hmm. that they can just walk out and within a short while get another job because yeah. they're constantly watching the world and the needs of the workforce mm -hmm. and they're keeping their talents up to date and yeah. we try to do this with all the people that work here we're constantly encouraging them to keep their skills up to date not not just in our profession right. but in anything that they have passion about because we feel as a as a company that the people that work for us that were to steward them to find fulfillment in life and not just to bring mm. more um, money to the owners of the company. Sure, that's not the goal of the employees, and that's the way an uh, an employer should look at their sure. employees. Is that I should be here to make them successful, and if I show them that concern they will also return that type of you know it's the reap what you sell exactly you know and so give you a great story we had a young guy that worked here and we invested in him got a CFP and so forth and uh, we said you know Chris this isn't your passion is it and he said no not really but you know I like he was still here. finding his way yeah he was still finding we said we want to help you find your passion and he, you know, and so we helped him, and he went on a dive expedition to Madagascar, and then he went on a, he became a dive master down in Nicaragua. Learned and Spanish really well. Learned Spanish and so forth. Then he went to Colombia, and he started to teach people how to speak English, and 
and he continued to learn his Spanish skills. And, and just recently, he landed a job with Grameen Bank, yeah. which is Muhammad Yunus. Yunus. Uh -huh. I always want to say something. Yunus, Muhammad Yunus, yep. which is microfinance. They lend little bits of money to people in poverty to help pull them out of poverty. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's actually beginning the base of a new bank, and they have a strategy. They go in and teach English first. That's amazing. And then they have a next thing, and then once they do, they establish the bank, and then they start lending money to the yeah. people. And it's a whole program. It takes years to implement. And they have hired him as the person to help start this, beginning with the, the teaching English, because he has a financial background. And, you know, here's this guy. is finding his passion, yeah. and it's really exciting to watch and to uh, experience. Yeah. So It's a model of leadership that makes capital. me proud to be here. Really well, is. Now, real quickly. We got a seminar coming up. We do. Um, it's uh, June 27th at the place where we do the WCBM radio. It's at the Double Tree on the Beltway. Right. So it's Pikesville, used, Double Pikesville Tree. Hilton, everyone used to call it, still should probably do call it, but yet it's the Pikesville Double Tree mm -hmm. now. And it's right there at Reisterstown Road in, in the, the Beltway. Beltway. So yeah. it's a convenient, centralized location for all of our local clients. Mm -hmm. uh, but yet we're going to podcast it. We're going to, you know, have it available in a format that all of our clients over the world could watch it if they want to right. after it's uh, completed. And the topic? And the topic we're going to talk about is senior issues. And it's going to talk about... Um, how to maximize income in retirement, how to deal with Medicare, Medicaid, um, and all the different issues with Medicare. We're going to talk about, um, you know, uh, housing options yep. in retirement, and we're going to talk about some uh, different estate topics and protecting of assets topics that seniors should be concerned with who are, you know, really have a desire to leave an inheritance behind to their children. So anyway, it's, uh, there's there's a lot of great information that's going to go. To it. And it's available to anyone. Um, our clients are first and foremost, but if they want to bring a guest, they're welcome to bring a guest. And we are inviting some radio listeners that uh, we're, we're mentioning it on the radio occasionally, so there will be some of them mixed into the group. But um, Should be it's fun. strictly educational. Yeah. That's all that it's about. Anyway, we're out of time, Timothy. And this is Drew Tignanelli saying God bless.